Hi guys, you are welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, I'm AY and I'm a first year medical student of Lavity at Dola University. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking it basically to our ex students, those that are science students and they are preparing for their uh, practical exam. So if you are one of them, please and please keep, keep watching. Alright, so basically we all know that WAEC has certain criteria for science students in which all science students are expected to write practical exam for the main um, course subjects such as physics, chemistry, biology, aside the theory and objective that is assigned to all other subjects. So you are expected to take the practical aspect and these practical um, questions, your answer, I mean your results will also be added to the same um, whatever you get with your theory and objective to make up your own 100% and that's just like the practical aspect is just a bonus to all science students. If you did not know, if you are a science student and you are preparing for YA, well, that, that particular practical is just a bonus for you because it carries 35% of the old 100%. So that means once you have your at least 30% in your practical alone, out of 35%, you should be looking for like nothing more than 40%. In both the theory and exam I mean, objective, so it's just an opportunity for you. So the best thing, like the best thing for you now to do, is just to work on having a very good grade in the practical aspect. And in today's video, I'm going to be giving you tips and everything you need for you to get a very good score in your practical aspect. In this aspect, like in this part of the video, I'm going to be dealing with the physics aspect. In my next video, I'll talk about chemistry and biology as well. Now, what are the basic things that you have to know about physics practical to have a very good score? The first thing is that physics practical is divided into three. We have the optics and, I mean, the first one, physics practical is divided into three aspects. We have the mechanics. The second one is the optics and light, which is usually number two. And the third one is electricity. Now, for the um, mechanics aspects, they do ask questions on either moments or simple harmonic motion like simple pendulum or um, they also do ask questions on spring balance. So those are the main questions that you should expect in your number one. It will be between those ones. Equilibrium of force which is under uh, moments and um, simple pendulum or spring balance. For optics which is light, that's when they give you either say, a rectangular prism or triangular prism and or being old like the one that they ask you to um to locate light rays and all other ones so that's for the second aspect and the third aspect what the fourth meter they either give you fourth meter or ammeter or wisdom bridge potentiometer uh, they give you for electricity aspect like those are the aspects that they do give you question on so just expect any of this like for your um mechanics it's either they give you moment which is under equilibrium or force or spring balance or they give you question under simple uh, simple pendulum and for the optics and lights it's either they give you a rectangular prism and those are the common ones rectangular prism and triangular prism and for the third aspect either they ask you on potentiometer or wisdom bridge all these things if you are familiar with your practicals in school once you see the question you'll be able to know whatever they ask you if you are asked question on ammeter they will put a like something like a into um, a circle if you, are, if you are given a fourth meter they will write v into a circle and for your width zone bridge you'll be able to differentiate chi i mean you'll be able to assimilate whatever they give you from the right from the question so that's just very simple by the way if you are familiar with practicals in your school already now I'll move to the main things like what are the things that actually carry smart after you've noted all these things before your practical day now on your exam like should i say on your exam or before your exam the things that you have to know are your title value like your title value is very important those are the things like it's carry smart so those are how some students lose smart so because you are watching this video today i'm not expecting you to still lose that kind of mark your title value is very important i'm talking about your table of value where you input all your um calculations like all your readings so that's what we call table of value now the first thing you have to know about the table of, about your table of value is it has to be neat and I, i'm going to advise you that you make use of pencil first because if you run anything it actually is minus like 
with my little experience, if you run anything in your table of value, you are going to minus to deduct some of your mark. So that's why you don't have to like you don't have to um run 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 in your table of value. So you have to make sure it's neat. And for it to be neat, it's either you write it somewhere, you write out your reading. When you know at times when you are making your um table of value, you might make mistake. Like you still have to go back to um the first reading. Like that you make mistake that you still have to go back to the reason. Maybe the reading is actually going up and uh, at the end of the day you just go that it just comes down. So you have to adjust and do some things. So those ones, if you have already started writing the readings on your in your question paper, you know you will have to like you have to um, erase it off, which will actually make your make things like your answers to be wrong. That's why you have to like, firstly write it somewhere. And if you can't do that, make use of your pencil first. So that you can easily correct pencil with your eraser. Now, then after the whole reading, once you finalize everything, you can now use your biro to trace it. I think that should be very neat, you know. Then you clean up the pencil part. So that will make your table of values be very neat and it will, it will make your mark like your marker. It will make the person to award you your full mark rather than for the um, neat aspect. So if the person wants to mark it and discover that you've run everything, so the person might actually give you maybe no mark or even no mark at all for the neat uh, table of value. Now, the second thing you have to note is your decimal place. Please, this aspect is very important. Like, it's very, very important. Once your, um, your readings are not in two decimal place, it might not be marked or your mark might be reduced. Those are the things that make some uh, some students to lose mark. Whenever you are inputting your readings, it must be in two decimal places. That is, if you read 25, like on your maybe on any um either meta rule or whatever. So if you read 25, if your reading is 25, you must write 25.00. Even if you did not have any value after it, it must be 25.00. If you are reading your stopwatch and you have 25.5 or 1. Point, Two, it must be one point two zero. You must add zero at the back so that it can be in two decimal places. So these things are very important, and those are the things that your marker will be looking at. If you are doing practical aspects, your marker is not actually looking for any other thing than your mistakes. Just note that your marker is looking for only your mistakes so that you can see where you can deduct the mark. You know, once you have an accurate reading and not the necessary things, you are going to get your full mark. But where is the marker going to deduct the mark? From your if your um, readings are not neat, if you did not put it in two decimal place, so those are the things that you. Another thing that you have to note in bringing out the table of value is that you must follow the instructions step by step. In your question, you will be given that the first step, okay, your meter, you are given a mass of so so so. The first thing is your serial number. You already know that your serial number. If you are given five step, so you number one to five. Then you may be told in the question, maybe room Africa one, you are given a mass of so so so. So, so you are going to write out the mass then into um brackets in front, the unit of mass, which is mass, and the um you will be given each mass. So you are going to write out all the mass that you are given um beside the serial number. Then the next thing you are given, like how the way your question is being asked, so that will be the next thing that should follow. Not that you will, you will be given time as the last thing, then you now print time. As the first, so please don't do that so that your readings can be very accurate. So, after that, all the necessary things if they ask you to square your T in the reading, you just press your calculator. All the values of your T, if you have your the first column to be um T, then the next one is T squared. You just square out all the values. If the next column is one over T, you, you set one, you press your calculator one divided by the value of T. If your value is mass over T, you press your calculator mass over the value of t so that's what we be in that column and in that particular column wherever you have mass over time you must put it at the top that this is what you use this is what you do to get the value that's why the unit like should i call it the symbol of everything should be at the first like or at the first column so if you calculate for t square you must write it there that t square and your units must also be in front please note that your, the units of all your um, symbols, all your calculations, everything that you put in on top of all the table of value, it must ask their own, have their own units beside them. So you don't have any problem with the table of value again and its needs. So there's no problem. Another thing that you have to notice is it increasing or decreasing.
So your, you must make sure that inconsistent reading is also not allowed. So assuming you your first value for seconds is um, five minutes, I mean five seconds, then the next one should be should be either okay. Let's assume it's increasing. The first one will be five. The next one may be seven. The next one may be eight. The next one may be ten. The next one may be twelve. But by the time you are having five, four, then seven, then you still come back to six. So that's just inconsistent reading, and you must like you should check for your error. Either you have a mistake somewhere or whatever. So once all these things actually, uh, once all these precautions are met, you are likely to have your like a very good score in the table of value. Now let's move to the graphical aspects, like the graphical and calculation aspects. This also reduces math because your table of value is just your what we, what's going to lead to the graphical aspects. Now for the graphical aspects, the first thing you are actually going to do is to bring out your graph, like and note the particular um, scale that you want to use for your graph. If you did not note the scale, you are actually going to be doing rubbish. And I will let me say everything you will do will be rubbish. You must note the particular scale that you are using for your um, graph, that you are using to draw your graph. And how to calculate the scale, I think it's, that should be what uh, among what your teacher will teach you before your exam. Or if not, like if you do not know how to calculate scale, just move close to one of your teachers that can help you before your exam day. So, the particular readings you are given, you will be given in the, la like the, in the last part of the question, you will be asked to plot a graph of so 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 against so so so. Now, if they say you should plot a graph of g against t squared, you already know that your g is going to be in the vertical aspect, while your t squared is going to be in the horizontal aspect. That is this against this. So the one that the, the first one is going to be vertical, the next one will be horizontal. So your g is going to be like this, then your t squared is going to be like this. I think that you should understand that. Now, when they now ask you to calculate that, then you've you've drawn your line like the vertical line and the horizontal line. Then you label them. Label that labeling is also very very important. You write it at the top. Um, the g which is at the vertical side then at the horizontal side you write it there t squared now after doing that then the scale you are going to use now after you've now um measured your scale like the, the scale you are going to use for that graph then the next aspect is that you are going to make sure that the points must not add, i mean after um, labeling your lines too like you have to denote that as you are making use of two centimeters to represent one um uh, one unit so you start from one two three Four, five. So after doing all that, then the next thing you are going to do is that all your points must like they must correlate with each other. If you are reading um, one centimeter, one on g axis, then five on um, t square axis. So your line must be straight from five, then one from this side. So that's where you are going to. So once you've marked the point, then you now draw a line. For all the points, as we are given five questions now, you are not, I mean, five um, stages for the five procedures for your question. Let us assume you are given uh, mass now, then you calculate for five different masses. Now, your line must point at at, at least three um, dots. I think your, two, your teacher must have tell you that from the secondary school, so that should not be due to you. Your line must cut across three of those points. Then, after drawing the line, you make a slope. Slope is just like the um, highest um, triangle, so you make a triangle from, I mean right angle triangle, the highest also right angle triangle, so you make a right angle triangle from that particular line. So after then, after that, you calculate the slope. The slope is just the difference in the vertical line, then divided by the difference in the horizontal line. That is, if your slope points at um, 90 and 40 for the horizontal aspect, so it's going to be 90 minus 40, then for the um for the horizontal aspect, let us assume you have something like twelve and um, six. So it's going to be twelve minus six. That is change in the vertical minus over divided by the change in the horizontal. So if we if you have something like ninety and forty at the vertical aspect, so ninety minus forty is fifty. Then at the horizontal aspect, twelve and six. Twelve minus six is six. So fifty divided by six. That's going to be the value of your slope. Now after getting the slope. Then the unit of that slope is very important. Back to the example I mean, that I was using before. I said if you have mass in your um, vertical component, then you have T squared in your horizontal component. Now your mass, you already know that is gram, which is G. 
then divided by the unit of your t square t in seconds then t square will be s square so the diff your g over your s square is going to be g s square that is gram per second square so you must put the unit of your slope here it's very important and for the case whereby you are asked to plot a graph of uh, so what you have to plot graph on both of them have the same unit just like having length maybe the first one is length then the second one is also measured in length so maybe the two are distance then the first one is in length the second one is also in length so your slope will ask no unit because both of them are meter meter so meter divided by meter we have no unit that is your slope we have no unit so you must take note of that when calculating your slope the unit is very important then after the slope we will still now have some set of questions now i'm going to give you tips on how to get all these questions because they are mostly repeated questions so if you are familiar with your past question just carry your past question run through like you can just take maybe a night to run through all the necessary questions that they do ask under mechanics i'm very sure before your exam your teacher will just give you a gist about um which aspects will be questions be asked on so you can just check all the years that they do ask questions that are related to that then the questions that are under it so once you work on that trust me you are going to see the same 100 percent the same question because they will go back to that particular aspect and bring out the question all questions under your practical from, from like from five years ago a repeated question and that will be the same thing that we also encounter presently that's that, that is the reason why yx is no more releasing their um, questions you see you will notice now that you are writing your answer inside the answer booklet because they are bringing out the old questions back so once you study all the questions that are asked in all the practicals right from 1980 um, something till 2021 i'm very sure you are going to be able to answer any question they put under it after this loop then your precaution is very important i'm going to put some list of precautions on this video when i'm editing it so your precaution for each uh, under mechanics you have certain precautions that you write under um, optics and lights you have certain precautions then under electricity you have certain precautions so you just tell them i ensure this i ensure that i do this i avoided parallax error so those are what we call precautions once all these things are done trust me you are going to have your uh, result like the exact result please note all the procedures and follow them so that's all you have to do if you are watching to this moment please do well to click on the subscribe button see you in my next video